And welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I have a very special guest today, and that's Matt, the mortgage guy, a uh, loan officer based here in Sacramento, just like myself. Uh, but he services 48 of the 50 states. So I thought it'd be good to bring him on today to talk about this 1% down payment uh, program available for buyers right now, but also what uh, you're seeing right now in uh, the housing markets nationwide, what your clients are telling us or telling you in order to gauge where a uh, housing market's headed and also kind of uh, get some insights what um, home buyers are, um, the challenges are facing right now. So anyways, yeah. Welcome to the channel, Matt. Thanks. Good to have you back again. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Jason. I appreciate it. And and, and me and you wrapped a little bit about the 1% down program, you know, as somebody like you who follows real estate and mortgage, like, Hey, this seems interesting. What's this? And then it was only a few weeks later, another company brought out the 1% down program. So it's definitely creating a little bit of buzz as it should, um, because it's a 1% down conventional program. Down payment is a big hurdle for a lot of people. So it's solving that problem. And so just to give a quick overview of exactly what it is, back in April, United Wholesale Mortgage launched their 1% down conventional product. That is really what it is, is it's the 3% down conventional with a 2% grant coming directly from the lender. And so it's the same home ready, home possible that first time home buyers have always been able to utilize uh, 3% down conventional. But now United Wholesale Mortgage being the first and then Rocket following in May, they're saying we're going to subsidize and give you 2% of that down payment. So you only got to come with 1%. We're going to come with 2%. It comes with a few caveats. It's got its rules. You got to fit into the bucket. Um, well, first and whole foremost... Let's, yeah, talk, let's talk about the bucket and like who qualifies and stuff. Sorry to interrupt you. But um, so the uh, in general, for someone getting conventional mortgage, I think a lot of people are confused because I would imagine people are confused because oftentimes I hear from people like, oh, I want to put 20% down because I want a conventional mortgage. I don't want a FHA uh, loan, for example. Um, but I know, you know, being a real estate agent for like 10 years now and you're a loan officer for a while as well, that you can give a conventional loan and put 3% down. That's kind of like the minimum. So what you're saying is like, UV, uh, what's the company? First one, UVM? U U UWM, United Wholesale Mortgage. Yeah. Actually wearing yeah, I mean, their advisory council shirt today. There you go. That, that's a, yeah, Jason <laughs> fail. <laughs> uh, and then Rocket Mortgage are saying, okay, well now we have this, uh, now we're going to only have a 1% requirement and give you 2%. So just like taking a step back, like how does that work? Why would a lender just give a buyer 2% of the, it's the loan amount or the it's the offer amount, isn't it? It's the loan amount. Yeah. So if they're, if they're buying something for um, 200 and they're putting 3% down, uh, they're going to have a $6,000 down payment for, for that. Oh, you're, you're right. It's the, it's the purchase price. See? It's okay. <laughs> Trust me. I'm your numbers guy. I got it all in control. <laughs> I'm so used to everything being based on loan amount that I'm like, no, this one's actually based on the purchase price. So yeah, now I'm thinking to myself, Jason, Phil, again, seriously? <laughs> so, I think so yeah, they're, they're, they're given 2% of that. And, you know, there's a big push to help the underserved communities. The first time home buyers, low to moderate income. And so part of it is that, but... I'll be honest because that's how I do it on my channel. People can check me out, Matt, the mortgage guy on YouTube. It's a play from the biggest lenders in the country to gain market share. And I think that if I talk to either one of those CEOs, they'd probably say, well, sure. Because Matt Ishbia, president and CEO of UWM, came out and said, we're rolling out this program. It's going to cost us 20 to $30 million per month. That's wow. not pocket change. You know, that's a quarter billy a year. And it's going to help a lot of people, but it's also going to expose more people to the number one wholesale lender in the country, United Wholesale Mortgage. It's also mm -hmm. going to, you know, get more loans in the door for them because this is an exclusive. This isn't something that, you know, your, your neighborhood lender or just anybody can necessarily do. Mortgage brokers that, that broker to United Wholesale Mortgage have access to that. Now that Rocket launched it, you know, another subset of brokers who, who broker to them have access to their version of it. But it's really a market share play. The beneficiary of it all is the first time home buyer that falls into the bucket that qualifies for this program. 
So if someone uh, reaches, hears about this program, 1% down, and they learn maybe they don't qualify for it, maybe they'll still go with UWM or Rocket Mortgage uh, in order to get their loan and um, they be able to kind of like get some of their money back for giving it so, giving so much back to home buyers, basically what you're saying. Yeah, and for advertising sure. Advertising tool. Yeah, I mean, right. These these are the, these are lenders that are big enough to be able to afford something like that. Um, so, you know, that's, okay. that's my thought. Cool. All right. Awesome. So the two uh, percent never. It's not. It's a forgiven. It's just a free money, basically. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. There's no yeah. payback period. There's no silent second. It's a true grant. It's hmm. it's given to the borrower. And the best part, I've I've talked and I've been really honest with people about down payment assistance programs where you pay higher rate, higher fees, all of that. If you put side by side this one percent down versus the three percent version, there's no extra cost. It's a true 2% grant, never have to be paid back and no changing of what the loan terms look like. So it's mm -hmm. a great program. That's all the great. If you want me to jump into kind of like the box you got to fit into, that might be a con for some people. They're like, oh, never mind. I don't qualify. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm thinking of, okay, well, if I'm the company giving away 2% on every purchase amount, not every, but people who qualify. I think, okay, well, there has to be more to it than advertising and getting your name out. Um, so there's no additional like fees for that either then. Is that right? Right. And by yeah. the way, this is not a paid promotion. I just heard about this and like, okay, well, I want to learn about this. And so, I, okay, well, I thought my viewers would want to learn about this as well in case they can take advantage of it. So yeah, if they want to dig full deep, disclosure, great, not a paid promotion whatsoever. Great yeah. mortgagebroker.com. Come talk no, to me. No, 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 no. Don't, don't go to that website. <laughs> <laughs> I just kidding uh, around. So this is not a paid promotion. I just want, I'm really curious about this. And I think other people who watch my channel will also be curious about this as well. Especially I hear free money. I think, okay, there's gotta be a catch. If there's not a catch, people should want, should be aware of this. Yeah. I mean, I don't know the intricacies of it, but you know, there might be something with Fannie and Freddie, Jason, where they might be partly mm -hmm. subsidizing this because mm -hmm. this is the portion of it that people are going to get hung up on is you've got to make less than 80% of the area median income. So this truly is to, to, to help and to serve low to moderate income borrowers. If you're talking about um, Sacramento, uh, you know, area median income, I'll type it in right now, actually. Yeah. How do people go and finding out their, like an area they're looking to buy a home? How do they find out the AMI is what you call it? Yeah. If you Google... AMI lookup tool, Fannie Mae, it'll take you straight to the, the, the page I'm looking at. I yeah. type in Sacramento, California. It tells me that area median income is 102,400 and it even shows you the different limits like home ready mm -hmm. income limit, which is 80% of that 81,920. So okay. if you're in Sacramento, if you make less than 81,920, if you're a first time home buyer, if you've got a minimum credit score of 620, this very well might be the program for you because really there's no downside in, you know, loan fees or any of that. Um, and, you know, I haven't seen a humongous amount of interest in California because once you break down 81,000 in income plus whatever debts you've got, plus our median price being, you know what it is and interest rates being where they're at it's 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 really only going to work for a certain percentage of borrowers maybe 20% mm -hmm. of them but for those that it does you know great it's it's something that that can help you um become a first time home buyer okay so this is this is not just for is it only for first time home buyers or is it for uh, it is okay all right yeah it's so, for first time so home break buyers. down the summarize real quick what is what is the requirements again so 620 uh, credit score or higher 80% AMI for the area you're looking to buy in, correct? Not correct. That, where they currently reside. Yeah. And anything else? And first time home buyer. Yeah, that's a, that's about it. Um, and uh, and and from there, um, you know, it follows all the home ready, home possible guidelines, which are, you know, Fannie and Freddie's versions of the three percent down conventional. Um, yeah. But you know, that's that's about it. You just you you have to make enough. To qualify for the mortgage and the and the home you're trying to buy, mm. but not too much to where you make more than that amount needed to qualify for the program. And just you know, 
people in different parts of the country, because I know you got people watching from everywhere, um, your median income might be 75,000. Remember, you got to take 80% of it. Or you might live in a high cost area. You know, the Bay Area is like 166,000 uh, median income. And so so depending on your area, it's, it's really easy using that AMI lookup tool, Fannie Mae, to find out what it is. But 80% is the magic number. When UWM first rolled this out, they rolled it out. It was only 50% of the median income and lower. And automatically it was like, it's not going to work with a lot of people in California yeah. as a whole. Sure. Um, now that they've gone to 80%, because it was just literally the, the Sunday, last last Sunday, not two days ago, but nine days ago was when um, Fannie and uh, Freddie said, okay, we, we'll go to 80%. Um, and so you've, you've got to get the... The, the Fannie and Fannie Mae and Freddie Max to agree to it, which they did, okay. that allows UWM and Rocket um, to to bring these programs to consumers. But it's 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 okay. really more good than it is bad. In all honesty, Jason, like I've been yeah. pretty. I was trying to find that. something bad about. It. I was like, I hear free money. There's gotta be like, there's no PMI either. Is that that's correct, right? Well, or is there Rocket advertises no mortgage insurance option? which is hmm. great marketing. And, and if nothing awesome. else, they're great marketing, they're great marketers. Uh, that's, that's one of the parts where um, you remind yourself that not everything's free. Like you could probably have a 6.875 and pay mortgage insurance, or they're like, oh yeah, you can do one with no mortgage insurance, but the rate is seven and a half. Hmm. So you're gonna pay a higher rate not to have mortgage insurance, which blended might look the same. So um, you want to have a competent loan officer that can put those options side by side because you're 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 probably not going to pick the no mortgage insurance option because side by side the lower rate is going to look better than the no mortgage insurance. But those are the intricacies that every person probably wants to analyze for their own specific scenario. Yeah, and if they're like me, they make an Excel spreadsheet for it. <laughs> <laughs> if my credit score goes up to seven forty-two, what does that look like? If it goes yeah. down to seven nineteen, what does that look like? Yeah, because it's cheaper if you lower your credit score now, right? <laughs> no, God, <don't. laughs> I just More fake news. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I, I know that the the change got better, right? For a lower credit score, but the overall, right? Oh yeah. man, okay. that was controversial, dude. I I said some things and got some backlash just for stating what what changes had been made i wasn't i wasn't the guy in charge i didn't make those changes i hear you i hear you um <laughs> awesome well thanks for that all that so it sounds like there's really not minimal cons you have to abide by the um the minimum requirements basically and just i would say for someone who's interested in that look up the ami and the area you're looking to buy in and see if you can qualify if you do then reach out to matt the mortgage guy or your local lender uh, you know like and trust yeah for sure all right, awesome. So, um, so I know you're licensed in 48 states. I assume that excludes Alaska and Hawaii. If I'm not, you know, it's to, funny is is people always guess those two, Alaska and Hawaii. Yeah. We're we're licensed in Alaska, so it's actually New York mm. and Hawaii. Oh, okay, got it. All New right. York is tough, man. It's like it. I've talked to people that said licensing can take up to five years. Five years just to get licensed. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking like getting your real estate license, a total joke. Like I just you get your license in like two months or whatever. It's, it's such a right. joke. Right. Nevada was really tough. We recently got licensed in Nevada and you've got to have a physical office. Um, so I got a person mm -hmm. on my team who's in Reno um, and th their licensing process is just really tough too. Um, surprisingly, California onboarding new loan officers in California has been relatively smooth and fast lately. And anything that involves California and the government generally doesn't move smooth and fast, but no, that's for another video. <laughs> this is not political show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So I, having said that, cause I know you have buyers in multiple States, unlike myself, like my small team and I, we have, you know, the greater Sacramento area, which is like, you know, 45 minute drive of Sacramento. So I guess like, um, um, maybe I could, maybe I should say this, uh, up front is that I looked at, the number of new pending home sales, new offers accepted by a home seller that um, went into pending status as of May 15th. And I put May 15th because that was right around when rates or average rates increased around 6.7% nationwide. 
So I thought, okay, well, rates are very, very high, especially compared to 2020 and 2021, right? That our sellers getting multiple offers now. And so um, I just ran a search on our local MLS and found that on average in Sacramento County, which is a giant area, it's around 1 million people. If you're not familiar with the area, you would probably be, drive an out about 45 minutes ago, north, south, and maybe about 30 minutes going west and, and west and east. So it's a big, big area. Um, so on average, home sellers, again, for new pending home sales as of May 15th and until now, which is the 30th of May, on average, two offers received. So I was actually really surprised to learn about that. There's a lot of people, a lot of home sellers got one to two offers. You know, one house got 42 offers. <laughs> but I looked that one up. It's like it was listed for $400,000 and it was just on the market for a while, wasn't selling. They canceled it. They relisted as a new listing, new listing, and it dropped the price $100,000. So it dropped the price by uh, 25%. So they got 42 offers. We're like, okay, well, that makes sense. It was on the market for 189 days or whatever it was. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, um, I'm, I'm in Sacramento, Sac County, we're still seeing multiple offers, two offers, way different than a two years ago, a year ago when they're getting six offers. But despite these very high rates, you know, on average, home sellers are getting multiple offers. So I'm curious what you're seeing for the buyers you're looking for, uh, not you're looking for, you're assisting, you know, nationwide. Um, you know, what are some of the things that you're hearing and, you know, challenges are facing? Yeah, I feel like, you know, it's obvious that demand has pulled back due to affordability and rates going up. But then you also have this weird dynamic where because there's so few listings and, you know, you and I are local to Sacramento, so we're probably more intimate with the low inventory in Sacramento, but I'm hearing and seeing that across the country. You know, they're, we got loan officer in New Jersey who's showing me pictures of a hundred people lined up for an open house because it's one of six homes in the zip code for sale. Right. And so like the same dynamic is exists in a bunch of different markets where there's less demand. Sure but there's so little inventory that the demand that is out there is competing and it's, and it's highly competitive to get an offer accepted. You know, I just had an agent call me and say, I ran comps on this thing and the stuff that sold before it that's comparable was like 625, 630 agent lists it for 675 and has multiple offers within a day um, mm. above ask. Right. And so um, it's, it's, it's really an interesting dynamic. And then, you know, you've got what I feel is buyers finally kind of coming to grips. I didn't realize it until I looked at this last week, Jason, but yeah. you know, you go back to last June is when rates first went above 6%. So yeah. we've had a full year. We've had a full year where it's gone up to seven, back down to six, but it's been in this range of six plus you know, for, wow. I guess last August, we, we came back down to 5% ish, but you know, for the greater part of the last year, we've been between six and 7% on the 30 year fixed mortgage average. And so yeah. I think buyers- There was a dip like in July and August, but yeah, you're right. Like starting in yeah, back June, in September, 6.1, and then it increased again to September to again at 6%. But yeah, so I mean, definitely ever since September 1st, that's for sure. Yeah. And so buyers have kind of gotten used to it. Like, okay, we didn't like these higher rates and what that did to our mortgage payment, but it is what it is. And and, and they've kind of come to terms with it to where there's still, a, you know, a buyer segment, even if it's 40% less than in the past, that's out there and needs to move, wants to move, is going to move. And the the inventory shortage that's really nationwide is making it to where these people that need to buy have to compete pretty hard to get their offers accepted. Um, mm. I think that, you know, with rates staying higher longer and kind of like, you know, demand continuing to shrink, if more inventory comes on, then to your point, that average two offers uh, per home would shrink yeah. and we'd yeah. be in a, a healthier market. Like I'm, I'm a champion for the buy side. That's all I do is work with buyers. So I want it to be am too. Yeah. more and more listings, like being able to, to get some concessions to 
do a 2-1 buy down or, or the things that we actually saw Q4 of last year that evaporated mm-hmm. pretty quickly because that's that's one thing that uh, I remember having the conversations late last year. Hey, listen, the fact that we're able to get 3% in seller concessions and structure this 2-1 buy down and pay for your closing costs, all the things that we're able to do, this won't be around forever. And I like have no crystal ball to say it's going to be this long or that long. But as of a few months ago, sellers have enough, you know, offers and enough interest in their house. They don't have to offer concessions. And so a lot of those that were like on every single deal now seem like they're on no deal. So um, the market's weird and it's (laughs) changing daily. Um, but a lot of the same dynamics, honestly, like people ask me what's going on in Tennessee and Texas and Florida, where we're writing multiple loans per month. And a lot of it feels similar to what I see in Sacramento where, Mm -hmm. um, demand is down, but supply also is down. So it's relatively competitive. And, you know, it's, it's funny when people are like, no one's buying like 4 million is not nothing. If if there's four million homes transacted in a calendar year versus seven million, like it's a forty percent drop, but it's still four million. Yeah, you know that's you're talking about the analyzed number of home sales per the National Association of Realtors. Yeah, yeah. To say nobody's buying, no, like nobody's moving, like the number's still above four million. So so there's still transactions to be done, and you know uh, another thing to think about is we can't assume that just from a number standpoint or other reasons that, you know, oh, people aren't going to be move up buyers. People aren't going to do that because every single day I have conversations where, yeah, our mortgage is going to go up $1,500. We're also going to move next door to my mother-in-law and we just had a baby. Mm -hmm. She's going to help care for the kid. Wife's going back to work. And so lifestyle and the reasons why people move in general, like those things, are going to hold true in any interest rate environment. No, it's definitely true. I mean, there's always someone who is willing to sell their house, someone willing to buy. Um, but you're right. I mean, like the we're seeing um, a low amount of people listing their houses for sale, but also an extremely low amount of home sales, even at 4 million. I think the last time we had a uh, 4 million home sales or less was back in like 2011 or something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like it's extremely low amount of demand, but because the su- supply is so low that it's making it feel like it's a competitive market. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens the second half of this year because during this time of year, home prices tend to peak. Just like last year, we saw a peak in May, June, and then went down greatly because rates absolutely skyrocketed and then inventory increased greatly as well. So I'm really curious to see what's gonna happen in the second half this year because we don't have that that, that shock of like, you know, rates going up from three to 7% in less than a year, which is absolutely insane. So it's going to be interesting to see. So what, what is your take or your predictions regarding um, rates? I know it's pretty hard to predict and I'm guessing you're probably not a real estate market fortune teller either, but <laughs> if you, <laughs> if you had to say, says the yeah. on the mortgage rates, you know, it's always fun to guess, even if, you know, it, it comes with the disclaimer that for, you know, all intents and purposes, I'm guessing just like the next person is, the, the smart people I listen to and the things that make sense to me are there's going to be downward pressure on mortgage rates in the future. It's not going to be anything fast and it's not going to be anything dramatic. So anybody who wants to see, you know, a 4% interest rate in 2023, throw that lottery ticket away because that's not going to happen. Um, uh, but can, can you explain why though, too? I mean, I, I agree with you and I know why you're, you, you're, you're thinking that, but maybe for the viewer, can you explain why you feel that way? Well, for one, it would be really, really unhealthy for the housing market. So we wouldn't want that. But besides what people might think they want, um, even though it'd be impossible to buy a house and, and trust me, you don't want it as much as you think you want it. You don't want it. Yeah. Um, the but, reason why Matt's saying that is obviously when you decrease rates big time, this kind of causes joint increase in demand, which is going to cause bidding wars and for prices to go up. So in the short term, for someone's looking to buy a home like tomorrow, that's great. But in the long term, it's just going to create like a you know a feeding frenzy amongst buyers, making it even more challenging. Right. Yeah. And people also like if 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 the Fed lost its mind, it was like, oh, we're going to do 
six rate cuts of a half a percent in the next six meetings. Like that stuff has effects on the economy and on inflation and on things that cause more pain than the extra 300 bucks a month you're paying on your mortgage. Albeit, like I understand from a consumer's perspective, I'm like, I just want a 4% interest rate because it feels better for me. So like all the things that the Fed has done and will do that affect mortgage rates, like they're able to throttle that Fed funds rate up and down. They don't, you know, come to each meeting and just throw out, you know, random, like they project what they're going to do. So like it's already relatively laid out the, the Fed's plan for the Fed funds rate, which will affect 30 year mortgage rates. A lot of people like they're not the same thing, but they're loosely correlated. So yeah. um, the Fed in its, in, in its, you know, attempt to lower inflation did all this, you know, interest rate increase to the Fed funds rate. It pushed mortgage rates up like it being more expensive to borrow has slowed down inflation. And we've seen like 10 or 11 months straight of inflation data coming down. As yeah. that continues to come down, the Fed can pause the, the increase in the Fed funds rate. They won't go straight to cuts and start going the other way because they don't want to undo the, the work that they've done on inflation. So it's going to be a slow and like the Fed's goal, like the term they use is soft landing. So there's nothing dramatic about a soft landing. They're trying to make it as soft as possible. So like if we're right at 6.95-ish today, it's probably optimistic to think that we'll be sub 6% by the end of the year. I think that being somewhere between six and six and a half, the end of 2023 is the most likely scenario. It would surprise me if we got lower. Um, it would also surprise me if we stayed you know, above six and a half percent because there's going to be things that will have like at least the, the Fed pausing and no longer increasing the Fed funds rate should have downward pressure on interest rates. Inflation coming down, like inflation and mortgage rates always follow each other. So mm -hmm. as inflation goes 9.1, 8.5, this like we should see mortgage rates start to follow. Another thing that like mortgage geeks talk about, and I try not to get too mortgage geeky is the spread between the 30 year fixed, I mean, you talked about 6.95 today as an average and the 10 year treasury, which is roughly three, seven, mm -hmm. like that 325 basis point spread is usually 180 basis points to 200 basis points. Like historically over 30 plus years, the reason why it's so big is there's so much volatility. And so mm -hmm. as things become less volatile as we've got more certainty. You know, we sign the, you know, agreement and we're, we're no longer hitting a debt ceiling and all the other wild things that are going on in the economy. That's another downward pressure on mortgage interest rates event. Um, and so, so yeah, downward, not too fast. If you had to like pin me to a number, I'll call it 6.125, the end of 2023. Okay, that'd be a significant decrease given the fact that rates, according to the Mortgage News Daily today, is at 6.95%. Um, yeah, I would imagine they were, um, with inflation remaining pretty like sticky, that um, these higher rates are going to be here for a little bit. But I know that obviously the inflation data is pretty lagging, especially in regards to um, rental uh, prices. And so you imagine that inflation data is going to look better towards the end of the year. And that, of course, would put downward pressure on rates. But yeah, there could be more bank collapses. I mean, who knows what's going to happen, right? So it's really hard to challenge for that out. Okay, awesome. Uh, anything else you want to add uh, regarding what you're seeing? And um, anything else you want to? No, I think that's sure. about it. I mean, I, I, with with this with with as volatile as things are, and the real estate market and the mortgage market changing as much as it's changing it's more important than ever that people work with professionals. So whether it's me, you, somebody in their local market, make sure that you're talking to people who are closely following real estate. Cause I get reminded of this every day, Jason, where I talk to somebody, I'm like, has this person transacted in the last six months? Have they, you know, opened up any data in the last 
three months because, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's changing so fast, faster than ever, you know, and somebody like you who's got a finger on the pulse, um, somebody who's in the trenches doing this work every single day is going to be able to better advise somebody. And so when you're purchasing the largest asset that you'll likely ever purchase, make sure you're working with a professional. That's that's my that's my advice. I 100% agree with you. I always tell people the barriers into real estate is very, very, very <laughs> low. To get your real estate license, it's a total joke. It took me, I don't, probably took you the you know, same thing, like two months or whatever. And the easiest um, standardized test I've ever taken in my entire life. Right. <laughs> get right. a CPA license. It's like four tests, it's going to be two years. And anyways, yeah, real estate, because of this low barriers of entry into real estate, you have a lot of... Um, a wide variety of people you work with. There's a lot of great <laughs> professionals out there, but not so good at it as, as well. Right, um, well, right. Matt, I, I appreciate your time. Um, every, Matt, have you reached 20,000 subscribers on a YouTube channel yet? I am within like 30. So 30. I'm at like okay. 19,970 or something. Not awesome. Again, not a paid sponsorship. I like the guy, Matt, uh, and he, he provides his honest opinion. So if you guys haven't checked his uh, channel out yet, his YouTube channel, it's Matt, the mortgage guy. Let's get him to 20,000 subscribers today. I'm going to post this video on the 31st tomorrow. So hopefully we'll get that before June, uh, Matt. And uh, again, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And everyone who uh, watched this video, I appreciate you. I uh, hope you guys have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.